Heads up, we say swear words and talk about dirty things, so make sure you're cool with that. All right, welcome back to the Cronkcast, where we uh, talk about everything that has to do with squirrels, apple pie, and spinach. And don't forget, Silver Spoon. Oh, Silver Spoon. Oh, Silver Spoon. I've, I've never had to work with a live audience, but your roommate- We're actually using that take? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm not letting you- everyone, welcome to the Palm Top Podcast, live from a pillow fort. Wow. I'm Alex. And I am Kyle, and apparently we broke the bank on this episode. Oh, there's yeah. There's chairs, there's poles, and there's like four blankets above us. That's because we're both in the same room right now. That's right, yeah. a rare occasion. Right now we're on Silver Spoon, we're on the end of season one. Right? Oh, yeah. And we're we're about to finish off season one with a uh, start, uh, surprisingly, a, the start of a new plot line. Yeah, you told me that, like, oh, everything's going to get shaken up. I was like, wait, oh, we have one episode left. Yep. They have to uproot everything and have, like, a dramatic TV plot twist. Very much so. There's there's an, uh, an event that happens that's going to, uh, this is where the focus changes more on the people than the uh, relationship between animals and humans. Okay, I'm... All for that because I like I like the kind of uh, agricultural information we've been getting. I've learned I've been given another lesson about protein and whey that I wasn't <laughs> expecting um, the value of meat in the industry, how it's treated. But it'd be nice to kind of get some real deep character drama because we've kind of met the characters one by one. Now let's see their lives get shaken up. Yeah, the, the this is where uh, they're gonna. All right, so. These characters, they're kind of like in weird places now in the plot. Like they, of course, they complement our main character, but like you can't really tell the relationship between each one individually. Yeah. Uh, this is where certain characters fall into their place for the series. Like, hey, I'm going to develop into this kind of character and be used for like this kind of thing for the plot. Okay. I, I look forward to it and I expect some dynamics to be changed as a result. It's like you can actually see the puzzle pieces now oh, rather great. than just seeing the whole picture. I'm not good at puzzles, so I hope it's laid out. <laughs> I hope it's laid out mostly for me. All right. Episode 11 of Silver Spoon Season 1 and then Episode 1 of Silver Spoon Season 2, which apparently has a kick-ass opening. Oh, my God. I, I don't know if it's going to be in the first episode because I know they do that sometimes. Uh, um, they make you wait. Yeah. Okay. We're going to have to watch the opening either way. Yeah. You know, I need, I'll, I need to know. I'll let this happen. Side by side. All right, guys. We'll miss you. Don't want to kiss you. Kiss you. Dun, dun, Can't be a tissue because this episode's really sad. Look at all the ghost animals. Oh, I've been waiting for him to run by like the piece by piece of a human. Because <laughs> they have here's the meat from the pig. Here's the meat from the cow. Here's hominus. And here's my sister that I killed. <laughs> <laughs> here's yeah. my mother that I tried I'm sorry. to do. Sorry, Alex. I spoiled the whole thing. He actually killed his sister and he's running away from his family. And yep. Also, he's a soul reaper. <laughs> We're back. Uh, Silver Spoon, season one, episode 11, and season two, episode one. Kyle, you lied to me. I was wrong about many things. <laughs> that was not a dramatic ending episode. It was actually kind of a lighthearted recap of the show's themes before we dive into what's obviously going to be some shit going down. Yeah, I forgot that uh, the whole plot for season two is not introduced in the last episode of season one but yeah. in fact just introduced in season two like a normal show would do i was excited for something different but what i got wasn't that bad let's recap the last episode so komabe had his baseball game yes we're, we're starting with the uh the road to nationals yes and i will pretend that i know a little bit about baseball <laughs> and say that there are a lot of balls thrown a lot of dramatic lines drawn around the characters and sushi was promised. Well, uh, you, you should start out by saying uh, Komaba is a pitcher. Yes. And uh, he's basically the backbone of the whole team. So as long as he's doing well, the whole other team like can kind of relax. So they, they want him to be his best. I like Komaba's character of wanting to 
make it in baseball so he can support his mother and twin sisters. Right. And clearly some things might be going down on the DL on the inside because he's talking to Mikage in the second episode about something they don't want to talk about. So I think something's either going down with his family or his dreams or his business. But do you have any predictions? I, I thought in season one, I thought they were not going to do well in the baseball game and he was going to be kicked off or drop out or something. And he talked about grades, so I'm assuming he's not going to do very well in school. I, I would like for him to stick around, but I'm thinking he's probably going to get the boot in something. His dream's not going to come true. Okay. The, see, the season finale was talking a lot about people's dreams and how a lot of people feel like they're born into their dreams. They can't really run away from them. They can't break free from them because they're tied into the family business. So I'm, mm. I'm wondering what will happen if someone does not do well with that. Like Mikage doesn't have a choice because she is the sole heir to the Mikage family. He right. has to run the horse farm. Komaba's farm literally depends on him doing well or else it's going to give out. And I feel like we have to see a bad example of what will happen if someone's dream does not come true. Okay. So that's my dark, grim prediction. My prediction on the rest of season two is going to be Oh, look, Makage's trusting uh, Hachikin more, but who's this mysterious American protagonist swooping in? Because <laughs> the second opening, while not Goosehead, was very, very good. Debatable. It had a cool kind of, it reminded me of the Beach Boys a bit with the plain colors in the background. Yeah, they, they had like a very, uh, very monotone colors and like they have like the cutouts, like not full animations. But, uh, you know, fun. Fun opening. Like I can't I can't say it's bad. Uh I'd probably like it more than our last opening. Yeah. I I think that the endings are actually a lot stronger than the openings in both cases. Oh yeah. That goose head. Goose that head, man. Head. Like uh knock it some points for not having any animation and just being like painted stills. Yeah. But knocking it out of the park with that song, man. It had that cool aesthetic to it of like hand drawn, like without any shading. Plus and it's so, got the rolling. Yep, it's got the rolling around. They had a toy fictional trains. I don't know. Imagination, <laughs> whatnot. Uh, so so, so the, saw, there's one thing I do want to mention. Yes. Uh, we did glaze over uh, Hachiken giving away his bacon. Hachiken gives his bacon away to everyone he cares about, and by pushing off his brother, who showed up again for a third time, he sends some bacon home to the family, and we finally see the dad, who I was expecting to turn around with full Gendo glasses. <laughs> did not have that, but... The dad turned around, dad gave approval, or so the mother says. And you watch Hachigan's face, and he kind of has this like very smug reaction when he says, says, dad said the bacon was good. So there's some bad blood there. We know that. Oh, yeah. We know that Hachigan got bullied in junior high. We know that there was something going on with um, with the way that Hachigan wanted to take his life or had a lack of direction. I'm hoping we'll see more of that because there's clearly some resentment and feeling of needing vengeance in that family. You can really tell his brother's really only around because he doesn't want Hachikin to like not be a part of the family. Like the brother keeps showing up he everywhere. Wants him to come back. Yeah. Or, well, like, he doesn't involved. specifically say that uh, because Yugo himself is actually a very free spirit. Mm -hmm. He still wants him to stay connected though. That's true. I'm pretty sure it's bugging Yugo that like Hachikin has gone cold turkey and left his like parents that's yeah so he's like hey call mom or just like send send food he's kind of being the messenger he's kind of trying to keep yeah all the tethers in place i liked the principal scene where the um headmaster <laughs> get me down from get, get, first off, this, <laughs> how did he get up there there's a lot of questions he's just chilling with cats the principal talks to hachikin about like why do you feel bad about running away and aren't you glad what you found? And I, I, you don't see a lot of shows where the runaway finds a paradise that he belongs in. Like yeah. usually the runaway finds that he belonged where he left all along. And I really like where they're everyone he's found in every experience that Hachikin has had moving to this agricultural high school has only been a, the bettering for himself. Hmm. You also don't see a lot of support of just running away from your problems. Yeah. Instead, encountering new problems and how to like kind of encounter yourself. Right. And I'm glad Mikage found her bra. Oh, <laughs> we finally get the scene I talked about. Yeah, where Mikage is looking for her bra, and it's a classic Three's Company moment. 
And there's a lot of goofy season two has a lot of goofy aesthetic to it where Hachikin's face will become Pac-Man and he'll flap open <laughs> or he'll run towards Mikage confronting her about why were you crying with Komaba? She's like, it's not it's not your problem. It's none of your concern. And he just like gets cut in two and it says the end over his face. Hey, all you people who who uh, complain about the just talk about it, here's your answer. Yeah. They don't want to talk about it. We're probably going to wait till the end of the season. Oh, man. They're bringing in the love triangle. It's, I'm, I, I like Hachikin and Mikage. I kind of want them to kind of get through their own problems before they do any kind of right. relationship pairing. Right. But if that's the path they're going to go, I'm worried about having that blonde love interest squasher come in because I, that does sound horrible. I'm assuming her role just from the opening, but that is exactly the way the opening framed it. Is that mm. she comes in, noble woman from America? I'm just assuming. I mean, she is blonde. Yeah. And this is anime. She does have a big nose. That is a thing. <laughs> that is a thing. <laughs> Very true. So if they go with the love triangle, I hope it doesn't take over the two tropey wheel. I don't want it to be that. But so okay. far, the show has not steered me wrong. Oh, yeah. this, And it won't. What's going to happen next? Okay. Um, well, we didn't look up the next two episodes off the top of my head. We didn't. Uh, if I can throw more wrong facts, we're going to learn what uh, Mikage and Komaba were talking about. Okay, um, that's soon. At, at least in the next two episodes. Um, I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah, uh, okay, we cool. might even see the introduction of your uh, estranged blonde estranged character. Estranged American woman. Who's that dog? I need to know. Oh. That dog has been hmm. everywhere. Or, or does that come up? I don't know. There's a lot of plot points that get picked up and raised here, and like I'm, I'm kind of caught with my pants around my ankles right now. Okay. Uh, Just start throwing FMA facts in, and I will believe you. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, Hachi Can and Pork Bowl, they just they got fused together, <laughs> and it was really sad. And, and like that's why he hates his dad because he's just he's he's part. That's father. Now. That's father. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Damn, this show got dark. Oh man. All right. Well, I'm envious. Actually, I lost it. <laughs> All right, done. You mean you lost it? I lost it. We'll feel the wrath of the next two episodes. Oh, God. Stop being greedy. Ugh. <laughs> I want to turn off the mic, but I'd be a bit of a sloth to get there. I don't know. I'd take pride in my statement. Uh, do we do all of them? I think it. we did all of them. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie Gomez, for our theme music, and Phil Vasquez for our cover art. If you want to hear more of us, click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you know when the next episode is out. And check out our other podcasts here on Kitchen Bed Media. We got 102 Cast, we got Chai Guys, and we got so many other things. We're also on social media. What? Check us out on Twitter under Palm Top Podcast. Quick, Alex, best girl. Uh, I'm not allowed to say. The, the correct answer is Crab. Yes. Is that an actual character? <laughs> Fade it out. <laughs> yeah.